So I'm not going to talk to you about why you are in trouble, because I know you are. Uh, I'm gonna talk about what you do about it, right? It's not the what and the so what, this is the now what. Um, so, we're, we're t so we're going to adopt the stance of an incumbent firm, and we're going to look at strategies for response. And I wanna take you through a set of um, sort of a pattern, sort of response patterns and strategies that you can uh, adopt and think about. And, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll discuss sort of when you want to do the different you know, strategies. I'm gonna talk about four ways to do this. And these four ways, I mean, to be a little alliterative are attack, acquire, adapt, and absorb. Uh, by the way, these are arrayed in descending order of intestinal fortitude. Right, so if you have uh, more of an appetite as a leadership team for risk or ability to take risk, then you start here. Uh, but then you work your way down, and this is the lowest hanging. And if you don't do this, go home. Right, so that's the the basic, which is digitize the enterprise. So we'll talk about four of the four strategies. When do you use which strategy? How do you map your business context to? one of these four approaches. And the other observation I'll make is that if you're a large complex organization, different parts of your business actually may simultaneously be using different strategies. Just because there are certain parts of your business that are more vulnerable to attack. So let's look at these strategies. Let's start with attack. This is sort of the most satisfying if you can pull this off. And here the idea is very simple. That we spend a lot of time thinking about how Amazon wins and how all these guys win because they've got all this data, they've got all this infrastructure, they have AWS, they have warehouses, they have robotics, and they have. But you got some stuff too, as incumbents. So this is the concept of understanding your privileged assets. Your privileged assets are assets that you own that the digital disruptors don't have. And what are those assets? First of all, you got customers. You know, you mess them up, but you know, you still have customers. I was, next week we're gonna be working with a big utility company, and they're like, our core asset is our customer relationship. I said, yeah, okay, but there's a negative sign in front of that, you know, because they all hate you. Uh, so, there's, um, <laughs> so there's that, you know. So not, not all customer relationships are positive, but you've got customers. Okay, that's, that's, that's one. The other thing that you have is physical plant. Physical analog pipes, analog channels, which is what an Amazon doesn't have. Uh, so understanding those analog touch points. By the way, those are not only retail stores, but in the case of if you are an AT&T, you have truck rolls. The cost of a truck roll is $200. That's the cost to roll the truck to come to your house. That's what's called a truck roll. I got 10,000 trucks. That's an asset. The truck is rolling into your house. It can do other things besides fix your phone line. Right? So that's an asset. Brand and trust is an asset. Service capability, repair, warranty, those sorts, those are sorts of things. So the idea here is I start looking at the inventory of my privileged assets and I create a disrupt, I disrupt the disruptor by creating a model that they can't copy. So this is don't play sumo, play judo. Sumo is when there's these two really big guys go head to head. You know. And uh, what you want to do is compete asymmetrically. Because by the way, they are playing asymmetric with you. They ain't coming head to head. So you got to respond that way. 